Hey guys, welcome back to the space that gives you inspiration on work, hustle, job, money stuff, and marriage, life, love, raising children, parenting, motherhood, and how to balance the two. For single ladies in the house, thank you so much for all the comments. I'm so glad that you absolutely loved, 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 loved. Um, I mean, to be honest, you've had so much. Like as, as a single person, you've probably gotten so much advice. You've checked, everybody's talking to you, but the one thing people were not telling you is that you needed to be self-aware. So I'm so glad that, you know, that that skill meant so much to you guys and i beg you please please take it seriously because today we're going to talk about the girls who are in some some relationship the guy is in the area code he likes you he said he likes you you like him you're feeling him you're getting those stomach churns and turns and Woo! Guys, I remember when I was falling in love. <sighs> you for love is sweet. Like that beginning love. It, you feel like everything is absolutely beautiful. Like you're just like, you, you smell of daisies and roses. And <sighs> I miss that stage though. I miss that stage because next week when I'm talking to the married girls, will be understanding the fact that love is not a feeling. So any girl that's in love right now, any person that's in a relationship right now, please hold on to the feelings because yeah, later they, they go because they are very fleeting and then you're left with something else which you need to watch the next week's, next week's episode to find out because not all do, right? So I absolutely love this stage. I absolutely love, I remember how you'd feel, how it'd feel when Brian would call and then we'd talk for hours on end. For the married chicks next week, you're going to find out that you need to share you this stuff. Eh? <laughs> like, you have to have an alarm that says, call hubby. Yeah, it happens. It, that time reaches, but for now that you're in courtship, you just, like he's, he's the only thing on your mind. She's the only one on your mind. So it's, man, I miss that stage. But there's still a skill, that a self-skill that I thought I should have had now that I got married that I thought I should have had to prepare me for marriage. And today I want to share it with you. And that skill is self-preservation. Self-preservation. Now, what is self-preservation? It's really literally defense, self-defense, defending yourself. And when I say defending yourself, I'm saying guarding your heart, protecting your heart, which is quite funny. Like, why am I saying that at the stage when you're most feeling these lovey-dovey feelings, right? The reason I'm saying that is because these lovey-dovey feelings, especially if you put in an ingredient called sex and start to have sex this stage can be very very chaotic because you can't see anymore i i i believe that that euphoric feeling of love clouds your judgment clouds your eyes blocks you from seeing the things that you need to be seeing especially now right so that when you see them you preserve yourself you guard your heart when we say self-preservation everything that i'm going to talk about this week in this week's video is supposed to help guard you from making a mistake even when you're in the heights of the love right so one of the things that you need to do to self-preserve during this period is to watch even the Bible says, watch, watch, watch and pray. If you're in a relationship right now, if you're in courtship right now, if you have a fiance, he's just proposed, you've just proposed as a guy. For, 
purposes of self-preservation as a main skill for during this period honey you need to be watching and what exactly are you watching for you're going to watch like an outsider looking in right and look at how your partner deals with life I don't know how to explain this to you because when next week I talk about some things, you're going to understand the reason as to why it's extremely important for you in this time, in this time to watch and see how your partner deals with certain things. The first thing and the one that causes the most commotion in marriages is look at how your partner handles things like money. Yo. Yo, money breaks up marriages, money and work. Look at how your partner deals with those two things. Me, anyway, from, you know how I feel, guys. You know how I feel. You know how I feel about the money. You know how I feel about the bag. Look at how your partner manages money. Look at how they, 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 they perceive work. I'll give you my, you know, my own experience. One of the things that I absolutely loved about Brian was that he was hard work. You people. I knew poverty could not pass at our home. Like this poverty couldn't, like it had nowhere to pass at my home or in my home for the future because of how hard working Brian was. I mean, for the, Maybe probably how long have I known Brian now? Maybe coming close to 20 years. For those years that I have known Brian, I have never, ever, ever guys, ever seen him get out of bed later than 4 a.m. Never, ever, ever happened. All his work, all his work, all his jobs, all his job roles have always required him to be out of his bed by 4 a.m. That's it. You know what time he would get back home? Late. He would have a job. He would have a business. He was constantly looking. He's extremely hardworking. So look at your partner. Friend, these things where you come and find your dude is watching football. And your kawa. Darling. In your mind you're telling yourself. Oh my gosh he has so much time for me. He spends so much time with me. You're being clouded. You are being clouded. Well I mean. Anyway, unless you want a lazy man. I mean who am I? But. From what I know. Especially from what I'm going to talk about next week. You don't want a lazy man. Look at how he spends money. Not with you. Again, like I've said, this stage can be very deceptive. Not with how he handles money with you. Look at, look at how he handles money with other people. Right? If he's stingy with other people, girlfriend, he gonna be stingy with you. Don't tell yourself, because right now he's giving you money and being stingy with his mother, that when you get married, he'll not be stingy with you. Baby girl, he is going to be sick. If he's a stingy men's association member, right? With his brothers, with his sisters, with his friends, with his cousins, he's probably going to be stingy with you. Or is he the one that loses money, like not loses, like gives away money freely? He earns 300k, he earns 3 million. When you ask, 2.5 million he has given away. Baby girl. Watch. That ain't going to change, girl. That is not going to change. You're going to enter your marriage and he's going to give some of your money. So watch. Watch how he handles kids. Like when kids come around, right? At a party. How does he handle? What does he say? Right? Um, watch how he deals with his family, with his mother. Is he overly clingy that every decision he has to make, he has to pass by his mom? Or is he like my husband who after he left his mother's home, 
I have to beg him to communicate. Like who is he like with his relatives, with his friends, with his colleagues? Chances are very high that even if at that point he's, he acts in a certain way towards you and to them he acts in a different way, chances are when things become deeper and he's put a ring on it, he's going to act with you the same way he was acting with his friends, relatives, colleagues. Yeah, it's going to happen even to you. The last thing that I need you to do is to get into marriage and say to yourself, oh my God, I didn't know he has changed. He hasn't changed. <laughs> Men don't change. <laughs> Men don't change. It's just that when they're with us and they're quoting us, they're also very high on that euphoria and they act a certain way towards us. So watch how he acts with people outside of you, with things that don't concern you. Watch. Watch. Watch so that you can self-preserve. If you see something that's fishy, girl, that's your cue. That's your cue. Okay. Now that you have been watching, I want you to get a paper and get a pen and pause this video after I've given you these instructions. I want you to write everything you love about your partner everything i want you to write it down pause the movie the movie the video pause the video right now i want you to write everything you love about your partner pause no seriously pause just pause it get your paper get your pen and write good you're back you see all those things you love about him you see them? Yeah? Looking good, right? So I'm so sorry I have to announce to you. But those are the very same things you're going to absolutely hate about your partner. Yep. Yep. I'll give you an example. Did I tell you I loved how hardworking Brian was? <laughs> Sips coffee. When I was pregnant and I needed my husband around, he was still working hard. <laughs> Girls, the joke was on me. I hated the fact that he worked so hard. I was like, my God. Tunaria hard work? Gosh, I need you. I love the fact that he was funny and the life of the party. Then would go to every party and he wouldn't be with me. Why? He was the life of the party. He was out talking to everybody. He's out who knows everybody. Actually, let me can I be can I be honest with you guys? I love the fact that he was well spoken and could be MC. But I now don't go to weddings for friends because I would not be with anyone. My husband will be the MC. I was I was absolutely disgusted by it. I was just like, can't we just, can't we just be like a normal married couple? Even if Brian is not the MC of the event that day, and the MC is doing a horrible job, Brian will tell me, ah, let, me let me come. Let me just use the toilet, right? Next thing I know, he has a microphone. He's at the front. He's now the MC. Friends, the thing that I loved about drove me up the Gosh! He does videography and photography and he's hardworking. Would go to an event, he would see a cameraman, he's like, that cameraman's angle is fake. Brian would go to the car, pick up a camera and start recording. I'm like, this hard work. I'm done. I'm tired. I'm exhausted by it. I love the fact that, friends, everything you've written, you're going to absolutely hate. you see how you've told yourself oh my gosh i love the fact that he's so generous honey you'll be wanting diapers for your child and he's busy giving away the money i'm telling you you see all those things that you love about him you're going to absolutely hate now it's time for you to get your pen and paper again pause this movie and write this video pause this video i think i should do a movie what's up with me anyway pause this video and write 
everything you dislike about your partner. Write it. Pause. And we're back. Eh? Like a list is so small, right? <laughs> or is it so big because you're hoping that I'm going to say now those things that you dislike about him, you're going to love about him. I have more bad news for you. The things you dislike about your partner, you will hate even more. If you see that he snores a little bit, it's going to multiply by 1,000 when you get married. I promise you. You're go it's going to drive you up the wall. Literally. Those things that you've said that you don't like about your partner right now, unfortunately, you're going to absolutely dislike and hate when you get married. I know. Like, so, where is a silver lining in this thing called marriage, right? I'm telling you that because of the things that you like that now you don't like and the things that you dislike that now you don't like even more, those are the causes as to why people fight in the start of their marriages. And it's not new. You're not the only one. Don't feel like now you got married to a wrong person. Why am I telling you this while you're courting? Because you've watched, you've seen, I want you to self-preserve. Get ready! Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because it's coming. And I know the feeling that you have, like, oh, no, he's my, he's my person. That ain't going to happen to us, honey. It's going to happen. There have been millions of marriages around the world. Your love is beautiful and wonderful right now. But it is going to go through that stage. That's a stage that I talked about in the marriage when I did my marriage series. If you've not watched, I'll leave the video either up here or down in the description box. One of the four stages of marriage called the drama stage. The drama stage is healthy for your marriage. And I'll explain why in next week's, next week's video. So those are the things that you're going to fight about and you need to self-preserve. You need to get ready because it's going to happen. And you know what's even more complicated about this stage is everything that he likes about you or your partner likes about you, they are going to hate. And everything they dislike about you, they are going to hate even more. What's this about, right? So in a way for self-preservation, my third step for you under this skill of self-preservation is to get professional help. These things are only going to church for your counseling. I advise you. Please, I beg you, please go for professional help in addition to church counseling. Go for professional counseling in addition to church counseling. Church counseling can be brief, um, can be quick, can be in groups. You need the uh, ses sessions that are about you and your partner. It took us over a year of professional counseling with Brian and I. And yet, even then, when we went into the marriage, it was tight. But I still believe it was one of the things that held our marriage together. Now, for the girls that have gotten married or you're deep in the marriage, next week is your video. If you like this, um, share with your friends, comment, like, subscribe if you haven't yet, right? And lastly, watch the ad at the end of this video. See you next week. Bye-bye.